In the last lecture, we used the base layout to create our multi-page application. We also use the browser router so that now we can go to multiple pages like accounts and profile. We still have a couple of issues over here. The first thing is that currently at this point, as you can see that we are not really logged in. There is nothing in the local storage. There is no JSON web token. So even though we are not logged in, we can still go to different pages. This should not be allowed. The other thing that you can see over here is that even though we are not logged in, we are still displaying the accounts and the profile links. These two links should only be displayed when the person is logged in successfully. The way that we are going to solve this problem is we are going to introduce global state by using Redux. And Redux is going to hold the username and if the person is authenticated or not. And since Redux is the global state, any change we do in one component can be reflected in other components. So let's go ahead and start installing Redux. Go ahead into your client folder, which is your React folder. And first of all, go ahead and install Redux. After installing Redux, we're going to go ahead and also install React Redux. Perfect. So now that we have Redux installed, we can now go ahead and initialize Redux. I'm going to go into index.js file. And I'm going to import create store from Redux. The create store will be responsible for creating a global store. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create the store. But if we run this right now, and if I go ahead and say npm start, you will see that we get an error. In order to create the Redux store, we must provide the store with the reducer since reducer is the only one who can update the store. Currently, we don't really have any reducer. So let's go ahead and add a new folder for our store. Inside the store, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file. I will call it reducer.js. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and define a reducer a reducer is simply a function that takes in the state and action and return the updated state. Currently, we don't even have the state, so let's go ahead and provide the initial state. So this depends what do you want to put in the initial state. Let's say that we are interested in putting username into the state. That's fine. What else should we put in the, use, in the initial state? We can say is logged in, which can be a Boolean value, like true or false, which initially will be false. We will go ahead and assign the state to the initial state, so that if the state is null or undefined, then we can use the value from the initial state. And we can go ahead and export reducer, so it can be used in other files. Let's go ahead and say export default reducer. There we go. Now we can start using the reducer. Let's go to index.js file. And I'm going to go ahead and type reducer and press enter so that it is already imported. Perfect. So we have the reducer now, which is great. But how do we inject all of this into our React components? This is where the provider comes into play. So provider is imported from React Redux. Let's go ahead and wrap our base layout with provider.
provider does have one property, store, which we have to supply. Let's go ahead and refresh it. The best way to make sure that your store is initialized is to take a look at the Redux DevTools. You can see that right now it's saying that no store found and make sure to follow the instruction. Let's go ahead and open up that and make sure that the Redux DevTools is initialized correctly. Since we are setting up a basic store, we can simply add this one line without the plus sign to our store and our store will be initialized. Now let's go ahead and refresh it again. And now you can see the Redux DevTools is showing you a different view. Click on the state and we can already see our state, which is correct. We have the username with nothing set and is logged in, which also does not have anything set. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that when the person actually logs in, we update the global state and mark or update the is logged in property from false to true. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that in the next lecture.